Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 in the Pioneer Plaza in beautiful downtown Honolulu. Uh, we got a great technical staff here with Think Tech Hawaii. You can catch all of our programming on thinktechhawaii.com and even live. And we have a call-in number, which is 415-871-2474. Today, we have a great story about one of the, the better nonprofit organizations in the entire state of Hawaii. It's Junior Achievement of Hawaii. Uh, we've got a new CEO that just took over in February. And in her program, uh, manager or director that actually uh, has gone to Washington DC for the company program two years in a row. So I want to welcome both Aaron and Dell to the show today. Well thank you for having us. All Aaron. right. Dell, good to see you. Um, you've been on here before. Yes I have. I'm yeah. very happy to be back. Thank you. Very good. It's good to have you and then this is your first time. It's my first time. All mm -hmm. right and you have been kind of the captain of the ship here now since February right? Right. I started off as program manager and um, I took over uh, like you said in February and um, trying to look at the overall organization and make sure that we're doing our mission doing it correctly and getting the financial literacy um, work readiness entrepreneurship mm -hmm. over to our Kiki. And this is a statewide program, right? It is a statewide program. Uh, we, we are on almost every single island. We have district offices in Hilo. We have district offices on Kauai. Uh, our mainstay is here in, on Oahu. And while we don't have a district office on the island of Maui, we do have classes that are operating there. Right, and I would assume, and full disclosure, I am the immediate past chair of Junior Achievement of Hawaii, so I have some knowledge and background on, on the programs and what they do. Um, and I know that Maui is certainly an area that you want to get focused on at some point. Yes. It's all a matter of timing. Exactly. And we are um, actively looking at Maui um, because of all the different things that are happening there. Uh, that really the, the keiki need a lot more of the financial literacy, the work readiness. There's been a lot of changes from the plantations and moving into the hospitality. So that is some place that we're honing in on and trying to see how we can best do it. Right, and some of the, the teachings that take place within the classroom with the, the kids, and this speaks to the company program as well, these are skills that don't necessarily have to be business related. These can be life related. These are things that they're going to learn and use for the rest of their life, right? Correct. So a lot of times what we try to do is we have three pillars for Junior Achievement of Hawaii. The first one would be helping kids understand and manage their money. So that's on a day-to-day -day basis, on a personal level. Secondarily, we do, we try to teach them the soft skills. And those soft skills are so important in this day and age only because Things change so fast. You have social media, everything is just, the jobs are changing right under their feet. And without the soft skills, it's really hard for them to communicate, to adapt, and to even think about what their own social branding is. Mm -hmm. Lastly, and it would be Dell's area of expertise, is the entrepreneurship. Now that then f goes back to once you're an entrepreneur, you, can you manage your money? And do you have the soft skills to manage your employees? Right, exactly. And there's, there's a lot of skills related to all of this. Having a business is not as simple as everybody seems to think it is. No, it's not. And I think we all know I started off with my own business, small yeah. business at that. And uh, it takes a lot of energy. And uh, without the proper training, as Dell does on the entrepreneurial uh, pillar, uh, it's, it's difficult. You know, people step in it and how many business failures do we have in Hawaii and how can we minimize that, especially for our kids? Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked a little bit about the entrepreneurial track and, and I think a lot of people call it the, the company program. Right. You know, and why don't you tell us, now, we didn't have it there for a while, but you brought it back. Well, actually, so the company program was pretty much what JA did in, at its beginnings. Um, JA started in 1919 nationally, and um, originally it was just what's known as now the company program. So it was teaching students how to run and operate a business. So now, in the, now that we're in the 21st century and we're getting more modern, more relevant for students, we've revamped the company program, or JA USA has, and it's now made it's on, there's a learning platform that's online. It's a lot, um, it's got a lot easier to use for students and it's a lot, just a lot more relevant. So students can actually get behind it and relate to it as opposed to how they may have done in the past. So with this new rebranding of the company program, we did bring it back to the island of Oahu maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we've been in schools 
for uh, the past couple years at Farrington and at Kaiser High School. And we're actually scheduled to uh, start at a couple more schools and we even started an after school program. So we're just really just kind of growing uh, kind of, you know, steadily, but um, really um, exponentially. Yeah, as that's, that's great. And, and I stand corrected. You, you made the point that Hilo has actually had this company program for many, many years mm -hmm. and, and quite successful mm -hmm. right. at it. And it, we needed to have something like that. And so we kind of used that model a little bit in a sense to bring it and offer it in, in, on Oahu, mm -hmm. but then also to, I guess, bring it up to the current digital world. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's exactly what, what right. they did. And it's been really, really amazing because through this program, we are actually able to engage students and kind of, once again, reach them on their level by doing kinds of events and things that um, are more interesting to them. So, um, for example, we, are, we do a mono tank where in order for the students to get funding for their projects, they need to pitch for funding. So they have to come up with an entire um, presentation about what they need the money for and how they're going to use it and how they're going to run their business. So it gets them really thinking about it really consciously before they even get the money to run and start a real business. Well, let, let's take this back in, in a sense to the beginning for a second. And for people who don't really understand what the company program is, it's not a bunch of kids coming together and getting some money and selling a product. I mean, that's kind of in a very high level what they do, but it's actually a very structured process that the, the participants, the, the kids mm -hmm. in the schools actually have job duties, they have responsibilities, mm -hmm. they've got to design. I mean, why don't you spend a, a few minutes and explain that whole process? That's absolutely correct. So Junior Achievement tries to make it very, very easy for our volunteers because once again, we are a volunteer driven organization. So we couldn't do this without mentors who mm -hmm. will come and oversee the students working on these projects and running these businesses. So um, we make it easy for them by having a really like laid out curriculum where it starts with like ignite your entrepreneurial spirit. Look around you and do you have the skills and what it takes to be an entrepreneur? And it actually turns out that everybody does. Everybody has some skill <laughs> that will make right. them a good entrepreneur right. and what, the, what their role and their strengths would be. And then it's uh, fill a need. It's so what kind of irritations do we have in our daily lives that people would pay money to solve, you know, something like that. Right. And then um, it's that the venture, so let's fi figure out. So that defines mm -hmm. the product, right? right if there's exactly. a need in there that they're willing to spend money on, then we've got an idea for a product. Exactly, and once again, one of my favorite uh, company program, um, Fill a Need, was a company from Kaiser High School called Nip Tips. Now, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're students at Kaiser High School, and, right. and this is a family show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> their daily irritation was they, they, you know, they're close to Sandy Beach. They go bodyboarding, and they get chafing in an uncomfortable place. So they created a low-tack waterproof vinyl covering for that area, which came in colors and sizes. <laughs> and that sold very well. <laughs> it did, but it's also the main thing about that was that they came up with something new. Mm -hmm. It was innovative, and they filled the need. Right, and but and there's been a, a lot of different products as well. I mean, I, I've seen fans, and <laughs> I, I've seen uh, you know different types of product that the different schools can offer and actually put their logo on, and, and it becomes a, mm -hmm. a school type mm -hmm. of uh, event. Absolutely. So that we also had a company called Eightfinity, which when they were feeling a need, it was the, um, you know, the heat wave, the record heat stroke mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, students were fainting in the classroom, um, they had to go to the hospital. So they had a uh, phone fans that would plug into that's your right. phone and it would cool you off while you're right. in class. And that's going to be a good temporary solution until we can put the air conditioners in there. For, <laughs> right. What is it, like 300,000 a classroom now or something? Well, I guess so. <laughs> Something along that line. Maybe that's another project that we can get the students to come right. together and have a better solution for. But at, yes. this, at the same time, though, you know, the company program is but one arm of what Junior That's Achievement right. does. And so if I can take you back historically, Junior Achievement did start off like Dell said in 1919, and it was strictly an after-school extracurricular program for high school mm -hmm. students doing the company program. In the low level, um, they would sell stocks. We always asked them what they built. I have people sketch it out, wine racks, doing all kinds of things back in the day. Well, and everybody has, they, they have a finance, they mm -hmm. have a sales and marketing, mm -hmm. they have, you know, I guess different roles within the company, operations, you know, mm -hmm. they, all the students get to play a role in putting this whole 
package right. together that mm -hmm. is, becomes a company. Right, exactly. So it's holistic in that sense. But then Junior Achievement nationally and in Hawaii, we realize there, there's also areas now that children really need to expose to our keiki, need to understand their money. They also need to understand, like we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier, their soft skills. So there's a lot of misconception that we're just the company program, mm. that we're after school. But at the same time, Dell's program and our overall program are running parallel. Mm -hmm. So now we're in almost every school that requests it. K through 12, and it can be uh, any one of the programs that they wanted. Well, and these programs are specifically designed for each class level. Exactly. You know, and these are, they've had been proven to be effective for what, 50 years? They've been offering exactly. these classes. Right, and right. I think, and sorry, I think an important point to make is that it's majority of it, a grade 95% is activity based even at, at the younger mm -hmm. levels to when they are in mm -hmm. high school. So that means that when we have our volunteers coming in to deliver our programming, that they're doing some talking, but the most of it is like meant to engage the students. Mm -hmm. And that's the main purpose of it. So and that's where the real learning comes in, is, exactly. is a hands-on type of applications. They, they're actually learning by doing. And we've had a lot of feedback from educators that the, the children, they're tired of being lectured at. So if you have minimal lectures with just concepts and you come in and you do an experiential where they're doing hands-on, they learn a lot better that and way. And they retain it too, right? And they retain it and yeah. we're really good at it. You know, I had a, a elementary age uh, student come to me and say, hmm, now I know my grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, they work so hard, they need to fill my needs and not my wants. And that's one of the main things on the elementary level. On the high school level, on, I've had a high school student explain to me why he finally understood a high school degree was just not enough to survive mm -hmm. in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's, just, that's enough to get you into college. Right, exactly, and, yeah. And, and then from there, you got to learn a different set of skills that that's makes you employable. Excuse me. But, you know, but what these, you know, Junior Achievement teaches, though, are also good skills to have. You know, not only to be employed, but also, you know, to have, you know, a, a, a life, you know, going forward. I mean, mm -hmm. how to do a budget, how to balance a checkbook, you know, what is a bank account, how does it work, what's credit, you know, credit cards. I mean, these are all different components of these classes that can be taught from, you know, one through 12, right? And a big one that um, they really don't understand and they, the light bulb goes off is the difference between a debit card and a credit card. Mm -hmm. All they see is a parent swiping that card wherever they go these days. They don't write checks anymore. So when we explain to them that the debit card is tied into their checking account and the credit card is considered more of a quote unquote loan and you pay interest, mm -hmm. the light bulb really goes off. It's, it's sometimes it's, it's hard, particularly at the younger grades, to you know connect the dots on mm -hmm. what's going on when you go to that ATM machine or the swipe the card at McDonald's or right, whatever. You know, right. it's, it's good for them to get this orientation. Mm -hmm. Well, how many of us have had our children come up to us and saying, oh, my, can I have that toy? And you're like, no, you may not. Why not? Well, can't, I, can't you just run the card? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. <laughs> so, you, know, you can run it if you got the money. If you don't have the money, you better not run it. Hey, yeah. even as an adult, I try to run the car <laughs> sometimes. So. Well, you know, we, we're going to have to take a short break. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to come back. But I want to talk a little bit. I mean, we've got a good feel for the programs and what's available and how JA can help the kids, you know, mm -hmm. through various ways. But we need to find out who actually does this, who, who's actually mm -hmm. out there offering this and, and working with the kids, and, and how do we make this all work? So uh, this is uh, Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. I've got Junior Achievement of Hawaii as my guest today, uh, Aaron and Dell. They're the, the two powerful uh, influences in that organization, and we're going to be taking a short break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Fintech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events, local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. 
Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker, and we're here today with Junior Achievement of Hawaii. And we've been talking about all the different programs, including the company program that they have and all the different classes that they offer through 1 through 12, grades 1 through 12. Uh, and now we're going to talk a little bit about how this all works. How does this actually happen and get delivered to the kids? So, Aaron, I would imagine there's a lot of... Um, reliance on volunteers? Yes, in fact, um, that's a really good question. Um, junior Achievement uh, really is has a program. Unlike most programs, uh, the teachers aren't allowed to deliver a program. We have what we call our secret sauce, and our secret sauce is our volunteers. Our volunteers deliver the program to the students. Why? Because the volunteers that come in are from the business community, so they understand you know what it takes rather than a teacher having to just read off a list of this is a business this is marketing this is sales so we bring in people that have all of those different mm -hmm. skills mm -hmm. and that is our quote unquote secret sauce so they can really speak from a platform of having that experience and knowledge and be able to answer those questions that will be popping up absolutely yeah. absolutely and i think it has a very big effect on the company program when you talk about bringing in mentors not we call them mentors on the company program mm -hmm. that really mentor these children through starting a business finding out whether or not their their material of uh, leadership material finance mm -hmm. supply chain mm -hmm. and then mentoring them through the var how, how do they all come together have a final product and, and and sell it and what's interesting is sometimes you see the kids that have an idea of maybe a way they, where they have a strength and they go in and they try to do it and they go, eh, maybe not so much, over here is better. Absolutely. And so they learn a little bit about maybe what direction they want to take. Mm -hmm. And I think, Del, you can explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, you have no idea how many students don't know that they have leadership skills um, until they're actually given the opportunity to have the, to be, in a, be a leader and they know what it's like to be a leader. Um, for a lot of our so like we, said, like we said, we can't deliver our programs without our volunteers, without our mentors. And this is true for K through 12. Um, we really rely on subject matter expertise that these uh, volunteers bring into the classroom. We can't expect our teachers to be able to teach um, finance, marketing, and all these other things that we, that we have and unless we get people from the community mm -hmm. who want to connect with their schools because it's all, that's what's going to make our schools better when we get people from the community to come into our schools and just share their money. So how do we do that? How do we get people from the community to come in and I guess go through a little bit of a training program to learn how to do these classes mm -hmm. in the classroom or do the company program? How does that work? We do outreach for volunteers. Um, a lot of our board members are with financial institutions. So financial institutions uh, are, are huge. They have their um, what they call their tax benefit to do it in, in Title I schools, which is 51% uh, or, or more of the students are on free or reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, just regular entrepreneurs coming in that are willing to give up their time. We provide them uh, the kit, which is all the materials they need, a volunteer guide. And we always say, if you can read, you can take this volunteer guide and you can teach this class. At the same time, some of them have a little bit of trepidation so our other program manager, Janelle, who's not here, offers them training and we also give them classroom management tips, expectations, as well as having the teacher there in the classroom the entire time. So they're not just told to go out and show up somewhere and teach a class. They actually have a little bit of training, orientation, they're given the materials, they get comfortable with it, and then they go into Absolutely, delivery. absolutely. And a lot of times they're repeat volunteers. Uh, they train. They're, they're down. They're, uh, they, they bring somebody else. So and the more they experienced person who's right. done this for a while will also kind of mentor and right. coach the, new, the newbies. Right. And I believe it's similar for your company program, correct? Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, we've been lucky enough to have, you know, the companies like First Hawaiian mm -hmm. Bank who actually created a program within their leadership programs to do the company program. So I know that sounds kind of convoluted but <laughs> or confusing, but what it is is that 
um, those that have participated in the company program or mentored, they bring somebody else the next year. And then maybe the next year, if they don't want to participate, they don't, but they've already brought somebody in who's done it before. Mm -hmm. So that's providing a lot of continuity and a great relationship with Farrington High School for them. Right. Now, there, you know, and I know I'll digress here for a second, but it's a really neat story. A couple of years ago, Farrington had a, a company program that did very well. Yes. And can you just share that story briefly? Well, it, it was a really, really great for us because we had just brought back the company program on the island of Oahu, and we were running the blended learning. So to have two students from Farrington, you know, who had never been to uh, Washington, D.C., or the East Coast, or the mainland, for that fact. They never left the island. Never right? left the island, mm -hmm. right. So and there was how many kids? We're talking about four or five kids? We took two from mm -hmm. Farrington that okay. year because it was our first go-round. Um, but they they did amazing where they... But there was a group of, of more than two that was involved in a program. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, but two were selected to go to Washington, right, D.C. Right. to represent And we allowed them the to self-select, correct. So actually, each company program is run as a class, where the class is a company. And they have, they have their different departments. And it's very much real, like a real company. So they have to know how to work together. They have to know how to motivate their employees. And that's, tr that's valuable just by itself, is exactly. how to work with a team, how to lead a team, how to motivate people, how mm -hmm. to get along and accomplish an objective. Exactly. Right. right. And so these two students, um, they were part of the leadership team, and they w represented their company in Washington, D.C. at the National Student Leadership Summit. Mm -hmm. And uh, w So they went all the way to D.C. That's right. Um, to compete. And to compete mm -hmm. in the program. Mm -hmm. And how much did this cost them? <laughs> it was free for them. Uh -huh, that's what I was looking for. All right. So this uh, is at no cost to the students. All of our programs actually are at no cost to the student, the teacher, uh, the school. So what we do is, um, as an organization, we provide all of the materials, the staff, mm -hmm. the, of course the volunteers are volunteers. In order to you know, afford all of that, we fundraise. Um, we rely on a lot of contributions a lot of grants, uh, a lot of um, special event revenue income. Mm -hmm. And without that, we would not be able to serve as many mm -hmm. students as we serve. Well, and the board of directors make contributions. Yes, And there's they also a, a mechanism to make contributions through, you know, online. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a variety of ways. I mean, and if I recall, there's something about a golf outing or something. Oh, our around. golf tournament. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Reg. <laughs> <laughs> So the Junior Achievement Golf Tournament, and most of this will go to benefit the company program mm -hmm. um, because we are, such, we just do so much and you know, in order to keep up with it and be able to offer the students the things that we do offer them, which are these amazing opportunities, is you know, we're going to fundraise with the golf tournament. So September 29th, Hawaii Prince Golf Course. What, what um, date was that? September 29th. Wow at the Hawaii Prince Golf Course and please see our website or email me. And what, <laughs> what is the website? www.jahawaii.org. .org, okay. Mm -hmm. And so there's a way to sign up for the golf outing or at least to find out more information and get a phone number if they needed it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, so fundraising, it's, it, all this is available, all these courses and, and these company programs, and if, if we're fortunate enough to send somebody to D.C., they get to go, and it's really no cost to the, to the students or the parents. Right. Um, now, just to finish the story, they went to D.C., they presented, mm -hmm. they did well, and, and they met some interesting people while they were there, right? They did. They, they received offers of internships. Um, Senator, yeah, Senator Brian Schatz offered them an internship in D.C. Um, With they, caveats. They have, <laughs> they have to go to college. They have to go to college, right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, but it, it, overall, for them, it, they keep writing us letters saying about how much they've grown, mm -hmm. how much they've learned, and how they plan on using these connections that they've made toward you know, their future lives. So it's and the confidence that this builds. You know, we, we were able to see some students from Farrington that had never been off the island before to go to Washington, Washington D.C., the nation's mm -hmm. capital, compete with all these students mm -hmm. from around the country and placed very well mm -hmm. in the, uh, the results. Actually, and Dell is being, um, she's not really telling the true story. And I, the I'm, complete story. I'm actually <laughs> bragging here. There are only 15 teams nationwide that are chosen. 
and approximately 90 plus apply every year. So two years in a row, the two years that company program has been in existence, we've had a presence there. So each year, out of 90 plus teams, they pick Hawaii. You know, and that's, that's a story that we need to really share. Mm -hmm because we can compete. We got some bright cakey here. We got some kids that can compete at the national level and nobody needs to think otherwise. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we've proven it two years in a row. Exactly. And we've had such great support in DC from our uh, congressional, um, we've had Senators Hirono and Schatz, as well as um, former uh, late Congressman Mark Takai show such support to them at the expo. And uh, the other thing that I had the honor of doing was I looked at pictures just by happenstance mm -hmm. of these two teams before DC mm -hmm. and, and at the end of DC. And the change in them was so great. It, you look, it felt like I was looking at two different teams of students that had no relation to each other other than they had the same face. You know, <laughs> the, their confidence, the way they carried themselves, their ability to converse. And nonetheless, each year when our students come back, I get an email uh, from national and they always tell us what a joy the Hawaii students mm -hmm. were and the aloha that they spread amongst the other teams was just contagious. See that's that's the kind of can do story we need mm -hmm. to really get out there exactly. to everybody. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's it that's great. And and Dell to your credit, you've you've started this two years ago and mm -hmm. you're gonna be doing it for what, the next ten, fifteen years? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. you, you heard that here. Yeah. <laughs> he put, it's on, video he put her on the line. <laughs> Thanks and for not asking me that question. Okay. <laughs> and I think it's also worth mentioning that um, last year's, this past year's team from was from Kaiser High School, and they placed very well again. And they didn't, but they didn't win. But they came back. They called me from DC, and they said, you know, um, we just had such a great experience mm -hmm. that. We are going to come back, and we are going to we're going to put ourselves own program together. We're going to come back, and we really want to win. Good so I'm like, oh, that's like really amazing. Very good, you know. And I wish we had more time to continue the conversation, but we're kind of at the end of the show. Oh, well, thank you for having us. No, oh, it was great. I love having these stories. These are these are great can-do positive mm -hmm. stories. Um, and you know what's really exciting is that you know, we're, we're doing something that really helps not only the kids, but the community at large. Because a lot of this knowledge and this confidence goes back and they bring it to their families and their neighborhoods. And it's, I think it's just a, a great process. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations to both of you for a great job. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday at two o'clock. Uh, we focus on positive stories in Hawaii. And as you just heard, there's many of them. So uh, hope to see you next week. Until then, aloha.